Phoenix Journal Number 3 Space Gate The Veil Removed by J. Argus Series Hatton Appendix 1 The Grey Men Tape This is an edited transcription of a lecture taped, the 23rd of April, 1988. The information is valid and, if anything, more easily recognized today. Hatton. I will be utilizing this information again, when I speak of economics, but for now, I will modify from the audio tape to save time and repetition. Let us call the group which has elaborate, and successful, plans to rule your nation and your world, the internationalists. When I refer to the internationalists, I am referring to a very elite group of about 12 to 13 families. These families hold your purse strings, the zipper and lock, to all the bags of money in your world. Sound impossible? Nay, it is not only possible, it is extremely easy to visualize after I have explained it to you. As I move along, I will give you some names and places whereby, you can check it out on an individual basis. I wish never to place any human at risk, however, so in all instances I will only refer to those already having come forth with public statements or information. I will also have to explain a few terms used to have any sense of continuity. Therefore, as we move along, forgive me of any digression in attempt to give definition, that is, fractional banking. First, you must fully come into understanding that there truly are the elite few, with plans well foundationed and functioning, who control both the world financial markets and ultimately will control all peoples of the world. Do not err in your thoughts, by thinking I am speaking of someone else in the world, I speak more for the United States of America than I do of the remainder of your world. As I pull portions of the puzzle together for this document, I shall again be referring to such groups as the Trilateral Commission, the Council on Foreign Relations, and the Bilderbergers. Forgive me if I am repetitious. I may need to be repetitious in order to fit the pieces in proper perspective. You must know that there are certain families literally that control the hard currency. The countries wherein these families abide are known as hard currency countries. These 13 families have control of the policy making and the decision making of the central banks of those countries. They are owners, these families, of the majority of the stock of the regional banks of the Federal Reserve System. Federal Reserve would indicate to the more uninformed that this is a federal governmental branch. This is untrue, the Federal Reserve System is not a branch of your federal government. Just as these families control the regional banks of the Federal Reserve System, they also control the currencies that are not allowed to fluctuate. Note here, that the American dollar is the standard against which all other currency is measured. All other nations are affected according to the changing values of the dollar. Not only do these families control the currencies, but they likewise control the banks. This, friends, is in all the leading nations of your world. For ease of understanding, let us just consider the industrialized nations at this point. I will also need to explain fractional banking to you, because without understanding the lending system, you cannot get the picture properly. All of the banks under control of these families practice fractional banking, and beyond, sometimes there is no hard money present at all. But, let us explain by example on a personal level. This is actually referred to as fractional reserve banking. Lenders are allowed to loan a maximum of up to 20 to 1. This is perfectly legal practiced by every lending institution in America and elsewhere. Example. Mr. A goes to his friendly banker, Mr. B, and deposits $1,000, $1,000, 
into Mr. B's bank. Mr. B's bank is a savings and loan so Mr. A puts the $1,000 into his own savings account. The savings and loan is required by your laws to keep only 5% in reserve. They are allowed to loan out 95% of the money invested or 95% of that which is placed into savings accounts. This means of $1,000 there is $950, which is available to be loaned out. In turn, the savings and loan takes the $950 and loans it to Mr. C to do some home repairs, let us say. This gentleman takes his borrowed $950 and goes to the local hardware an all lumber company, and purchases supplies, lumber, nails, etc. The lumber company carries on regular banking and therefore, he goes to his bank with the $950 for deposit, to Bank D. Bank D is now required to keep 5%, but can loan out 95% which would be $902.50. Bank D now loans that to Mr. X who in turn filters it back into the economy, let us suppose, through the grocery store and other business stores. He spends it, and now we are going to have that money end up in the Bank Z. Bank Z is required to keep 5%. That means that Bank Z can loan out $857.37. It is again loaned and filtered back into the economy. This is continued right down to zero. With your $1,000 deposit, those bankers using fractional reserve banking are now allowed to loan out $20,229.60. This is practiced by every lending institution in America and elsewhere. The amounts above do not include interest on the money borrowed only the principal amount. You must now keep it in mind, that this results in an increase in the money supply through the Federal Reserve System. Your big boys simply turn up the speed of your money presses, and run them a little faster and faster in order to pump more into the economy, just to boost up the fractional reserve banking. Let me remind you, to keep in mind that the 13 families control all of the hard currencies of the world, and are allowed to practice this fractional reserve banking, this will be important as we move along. We will now talk about something referred to, on your planet, as System 2000, which is a global creditors unilateral plan. This plan went into effect somewhere about the early 1970s. At that time a Pentagon official and several other officials visited Nigeria. They went to the Prime Minister and they paid him $50 million, $50 million, to raise the price of his oil to more than double. Nigerian oil is light crude of quality such as it is almost pure enough to burn immediately, without distillation, in automobiles. This type of oil sets the price of oil for the entire world. The $50 million was cash across the board with no repayment requirements, if Nigeria would double the price of light crude. We will refer to this as light oil. There are only two locations in the world that have this light oil and, of course, it is the most valuable oil in your world, therefore, it is the standard against which all other oil in the world is measured. So. Whoever controlled the price of the light oil, at that time controlled the price of all of the oil in the world. At this point, let us bring the Arabs into this scenario. This will also bring in the Trilateral Commission, that also includes Mr. Bush. It was now time to bring pressure and persuasion to OPEC, Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries. What most of you Americans do not remember is that the United States of America is a member of OPEC. It is kept most low profile. At the time, a deal was cut with the Middle Eastern oil producers and this is how it went. 
or buyers were prepared to pay significantly higher prices for the oil, provided all Middle Eastern nations supported the United States of America by investing the revenues into the big banks in America. To make this picture clear, you must remember that the Arabs, who are wealthy sheiks today, had been wandering around on camelback in a very big desert. They were nomads, and they were certainly most unsophisticated in business affairs. Years earlier, when the international bankers found out there was oil in their countries, they went forth and persuaded the Arabs to allow them to produce the oil by financing the oil fields, drilling, rigging, all supplies including expertise. After the bankers financed the oil fields, they then charged the Arabs usury fees for building the oil supply systems, along with refineries. The usury was quickly repaid because the Arabs became very rich, very quickly. Way back then, you were only paying about 30 cents per gallon in your gasoline stations. Let us now take it further. You go to Nigeria and pay them to double the price of light crude. Unbeknownst to the Arabs, those ones who had become wealthy overnight and didn't know zero about business, much less international finance, the camel nomads, you call them together and say, we will take the price of crude just as high as you want it to go, if you will deposit an established portion of the funds that you get from this new profit rise into 30-year time certificates in certain major U.S. banks. Perhaps you ones can now understand the problems you experienced in your early 1970s. Remember the gas lines and the prices of oil skyrocketing? It was because the international bankers, who hold the purses of the world, knew that the increase in the price of oil that was going to the Arabs, would come rushing right back to their bank in 30-year time certificates of deposit. Turn now to the 3D year time deposits and let us examine the bankers' plans. Back in the late 70s and early 80s Sheikh Imani and his bunch had no idea that there was a connection between those banks, or that they were the same people that had the controlling interest of the major oil companies. Do you see what has been woven here? After all, how could the camel-riding nomads realize that international bankers were having them hook, line, and up to the fishing pole? How could they possibly know that what was happening through these oil companies was that the monies were being cycled right back into the selected, no exceptions, banking system? They couldn't and they didn't. Going a long ways back now, in the 1870s the Rockefellers set up something called a joint stock trust. Here I will add, this was just a brief period of time before the American government declared these trusts illegal. But, you see, these ones could function forever under what you call a grandfather clause. That, brothers, is the ultimate controlling factor in America of the prime banks and the Federal Reserve Board. That trust is in the control of the Rockefeller Foundation, and in turn controls the Federal Reserve Bank, and is the method whereby, the internationalists are able to gain control of the currency of the USA. Does it begin to become reasonable that those New York banks are showing all-time record earnings? Yet, all around the rest of your country of the US, banks and savings and loans are going broke and failing. That, friends, means you are being manipulated right along with the Arabs and equally as blindly, with no recourse. Let us come back now, and speak of the deal which was cut, your ones in power loved the term, with the Saudi Arabians and ones of the Middle East. These ones were required to put their money into the prime banks, Keep in mind that they did not know that the prime banks were able to lend in amounts of 20 to 1. 20 to 1 was quite a while ago, it is higher at present. All they were receiving was the interest on the money they had deposited. Worse for them, in some of these countries, 
it is unacceptable to receive interest for religious reasons, so they might wait 30 years to get any money from their certificates of deposit. In other words, they did not know that this fractional type of banking could be done, but through this, the bankers of the world were able to gain control of the money of the Arab world, and in turn, the Arab world only received back part of the interest, from the money that they placed into the international banking system, under these 30-year time deposit certificates. Through the money gained from the Arabs through the manipulation of the price of oil, and taking the price of gasoline from, let us say, 30 cents a gallon to $1.25 a gallon, there is a lot of money being made. Now, with that money returning into the international banks at 20 to 1, I think you can see the staggering profits. Let us face facts, friends, that money originally came from you. Because the bankers had locked in the deposits they were then, in turn, able to make loans to third world nations. Think back 15 or 20 years ago, when the international bankers started investing in third world country loans. Look very closely at the countries which are going bankrupt, completely broke, today. It was fully intended that those countries go broke, and I will explain that in a little bit. You might wonder how I know so much. Well, I have the best computer system in the universe and all I have to do is key it up, and it is spread out before me. My computers rarely reflect errors, only changes in probabilities and perturbations in human action and reactions. I am sorry, friends, your friendly bankers set it up deliberately, so that the third world countries would go broke. You have to pay attention to history and look back to the time when those third world countries were beginning to gain independence, and setting up independent governments. It was at such times that these bankers loaned the upstarts great sums of money, which actually had come to them through the Arabs, basically. The international bankers not only wanted, but ensured, that these borrowing countries would misuse the fundings. It was fully intended that those countries would go broke. It was prearranged that the funds could be mismanaged through greed and simply be squandered. You must remember, that the leaders of these countries had never governed anything or anybody. They knew nothing about government. They had been colonies under the governorship of other larger countries. The international bankers knew that the leaders were bound to squander their funds. It was known they would have no way to know what to do with them, and they were massive, and so the cycle goes. They were actually squandering money taken from you through the Arabs, through high oil prices, etc. Let us now follow it on through. I will hereby digress to a story from Dummer's Earth home state, Texas. Most of you have heard of it. Let us go back some years not too many, to jog some memories. Do you remember someone named John Connolly, who was governor of Texas? Do you recall that he was also in the vehicle, and was injured during John Kennedy's assassination? Well, Mr. Connolly was also under Secretary of the Treasury, he was a lot of things and titles. These ones with Mr. Connolly did a most fascinating thing, they planned to implement a new currency for the state of Texas. You see, Texas is a part of the Union only through a renewable treaty. The treaty is automatically renewed every year, but it isn't necessary that it be renewed. That means, friends, that the U.S. only has a treaty with Texas to keep it in the Union of States. It was not voted in as were your other states. Texas was at one time, I believe your term might be, filthy rich. The state was wealthy and there were many very, very wealthy individuals. Rich individuals such as the Hunt brothers, who actually had nothing originally, but became extremely wealthy, overnight, by oil. 
That was all the way back when oil was first struck and became so very popular. I am truly going to tie all this together, but you must bear with me, for there are so many facets. I must make it clear, what I am going to say. I will explain to you why, if you don't already know, it was so very important to ones of the opposition, and why there was an assassination attempt against Mr. Connie's life as well as Mr. Kennedy's. Why are those men broken today and in a state of severe financial trouble? It is because the internationalists learned of what the Hunt brothers and Mr. Connolly were trying to do. Texas, a state by treaty, can legally secede from your union. The Hunt brothers and Mr. Connolly knew that Texas had the ability to set up their own country and have their own currency. That is why they could be solvent, and not be under the dictates of the Federal Reserve System. Or, simply stated, under the control of the international bankers. At about the same time, they were in the process of gaining a corner on the silver of the world. This was in order to finance a process whereby, they could overcome the international bankers, and it was at that point the Hunt brothers were smashed. John Connolly was almost killed, and Texas, which could have been the only state in the Union to fulfill breaking out of the trap, has been punished with some extremely major problems. Today, portions of Dallas and Fort Worth, Houston, and other wealthy, wealthy cities have gone on to resemble ghost towns in your Old West. Ones who had grown rich in the oil industry have been severely punished, the Hunts and Connolly are bankrupt. The internationalists became so incensed, so angry, at what these Texans had done that they broke the back of the oil industry, and the major oil producers of Texas. It was a well-designed plan and executed in perfection. When ones attempt to interfere with the plans of the international bankers, you can see what the results can be. The Hunt brothers were working directly with the Shah of Iran, on the above plan. Immediately thereafter, one of the Texas bankers was killed, the Shah of Iran was deposed, and the Hunt brothers were forced into bankruptcy. There are many ways the international bankers can get revenge on ones who attempt interference with their overall plan, through murder or you might well be placed into a mental institution and locked away permanently, or you can have trumped up charges brought against you, whereby you are locked away indefinitely in prison. This latter has also happened to numerous ones in the UFO investigation circles who find and bring forth truth. It is exactly what happened to Colonel Windale Stevens. Colonel Stevens probably has investigated more UFO incidents than any other one individual. Further, an assassination plot was arranged and attempted while Colonel Stevens was incarcerated. Strangely, the perpetrator, who dressed as a religious leader, was caught in the act, turned over to the FBI, and has never been heard from again. So be it. If you will recall, the Shah of Iran was in perfect health when he was deposed and departed Iran. He was only declared to be sick after he reached the United States. You were told he was being held in protective custody at a military base. There, you were also told, he was being treated for his illness, which was not present at the time of his arrival. He died anyway, didn't he? Face it. His death was planned and the murder executed. In your present months, there is an international uproar over the use of chemical and germ warfare, utilized by Iran and Iraq. Some of the viruses cannot be traced, nor, in such above instances, would anyone dare to pursue it. Who would question a man becoming ill, being treated and then expiring unexpectedly? Certainly no one in the United States would question it. It was uncomfortable enough just having the man in your country. 
death can most effectively be brought about in any number of non-traceable ways, one of which is through microdots and variations of vibration frequencies, as well as through viruses. This is exactly what happened to Dharma, in her own dwelling, causing cardiac arrest. We just happen to have her under constant monitoring for she is a receiver of several of us in this higher frequency dimension, therefore, we can catch these attempts and can counter them. Doesn't do much for the mental relaxation of the victim, however. You can get verification of these little stories from Senator John Hansen, of your own government. I am going to speak of Iran and your people who were at Aden hostage. I doubt many of you have heard the truth of the matter. Senator Hansen was in the House of Representatives in Washington, D.C. He knew what was happening in Iran and requested permission to go to Iran and investigate. Congress refused. Mr. Hansen then purchased his own private airline ticket and proceeded to Iran anyway. When Senator Hansen arrived, the one Khomeini proffered an audience. Guess what the Khomeini said? He said, We don't want these hostages, certainly not any more than you want us to have them. As a matter of fact, Khomeini continued, I'd like to give you these hostages, at least half of them anyway, and you can take them home with you tomorrow morning. That is, Mr. Hansen, if you will promise to begin an investigation into the relationship between the Shah of Iran, Chase Manhattan Bank, Mr. Henry Kissinger, and your President Gartbre. At this point, Senator Hansen was most delighted. He rushed to call back to the U.S. to someone who could give authorization and said, Hey, I can bring half of the hostages home tomorrow. How shall I arrange it? The person on the other end of the line said, Well, I will call you back tomorrow and let you know. Now please guess what happened on the following morning? When the call was placed back to Mr. Hansen, he was told the following, Get yourself on the next airplane coming to America. Come home immediately. Do not bring hostages. Do not do any negotiating. You have no right to speak on the part of the Congress of the United States of America, even if you are a congressman. Get home immediately with no further discourse. Here is what he found upon his return to Washington, that the incident was entered into the congressional record. Further, he found that President Carter knew the hostages were going to be taken and further, knew that they were there for a reason and he was not to interfere. Now, you ones get yourself ready for a bomb, if you have not already had access to this expose. The release of the hostages in Iran was negotiated by a negotiator of Chase Manhattan Bank, in New York, USA. All outside overt and covert attempts to gain release was a facade. Ask any Marine who was involved in the military efforts thereof. Is it really any wonder to you ones that Iran is all ticked off at you today? Those hostages, and America, were held in terror while bankers got the Shah's money safely into their banks before the Shah was killed and then, in turn, got much of the money belonging to Iran. A pretty wicked way to get Iran's money into the Chase Manhattan Bank, so it could remain solvent and be one of the wealthiest institutions in the entire world. The international banks formed bank holding companies so that they could not be held responsible. The Chase Manhattan, Chemical Bank, and JP. Morgan's Bank were the predominant banks for money deposited by the Arabs. The holding companies were formed in order to loan out money to the third world countries, while knowing full well that the third world countries were going to go broke. After the Shah had been destroyed and the money was safely in the banks, there were massive amounts of money loaned to third world countries. These notes were shifted from the banks to the bank holding companies, 
in anticipation of the eventual bankruptcy of the borrowing countries. One holding company was for the purpose of loaning money to the third world countries. The purpose of the second holding company was to borrow money from the international bank in order to purchase agricultural lands. That means your farms and also certain corporations in the United States. The farms and businesses will probably continue to make some money, but the third world countries are designated to go down. This is ongoing, dear ones, not a passing fancy. Here things began to happen rapidly and with sleight of hand. There have followed myriads of liquidations, foreclosures, and bankruptcies which were affected by the FDIC, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, and FSLIC, Federal Savings and Loan Insurance Corporation which are under the total control of the Federal Reserve Board. Literally dozens of banks all over America quickly were, and are, being bought up. But, the big question is by whom? Who has the money in sufficient amounts to make such purchases? Further, where could such sums of money originate? The great sums come from the higher oil price money that goes to the Arabs, then deposited into the international bankers' banks. The banks being purchased are then intentionally closed. Some of those banks are still solvent. They are also buying up farmland throughout America, through the farmers who are now being put into bankruptcy because of the high American dollar, in relationship to foreign currency. At least this is the way it was up to a year or so ago. It is fluctuating somewhat at the present time, for other heinous things are underway which are the next step in the plan. I shall not go into those things in this document, for I intend to do a document relative to your economies. First, let us consider what is happening now and has been, for your past few years, a lot of things are being done now through the Oriental communities. Also. We are going to now consider currency on a world basis. We will also point out why some of the monetary plans and money-making formats are valid and viable. Let us speak a bit about Mr. Marcos, who was recently deposed from the Philippines. This is most typical, friends, so watch the hands closely. A representative of the International Bankers Bank went to those ones and said, Mr. Marcos, we will note all your loans and offer you alternatives. We will forgive all of your loans. You cannot pay them back. You cannot pay back the interest. You can't pay back the principal. But, we would like to make you a bargain. We will just forgive the loans. Digress time, remember, who did that money belong to that they loaned out to these third world places? It was not the bankers. Well, of course, it was that Arab money, because of the higher prices that the people all over the world had paid. So, back to what the bankers say, we'll just forgive your loans, the principal and the interest, and you never have to pay it back, if, always the if. The if goes about as follows, you have to do away with your national currency, whatever it is. The dollar will be your currency basis of value. You will be set up with a type of debit card system, instead of the usual currency system. Then, too, you must give us perpetual rights to all of the natural resources in your country. Interestingly enough, it was right after that little gift gesture, that friendly little suggestion, that Mr. Marcos was deposed. Why do you suppose that happened? Well, Mr. Marcos was pretty feisty, and he told the international bankers where they could go right after they got immediately out of his country. He had no intention of giving them sovereignty over his country, and look what happened. Everyone in that country found that suddenly their social security number was synonymous with their credit number. Further, their central bank was to act as a wholesaler for credit, which in turn, 
was extended to it by the new superbank which was announced by your minister, Paul Volcker, in the fall of 1985. That was ratified immediately by President Reagan. Just a fun aside for you who love to play with numbers and speculate about coincidence, the names and numbers, the digits, added up to six. Lots of things around Mr. Reagan add up to sixes, even his retirement home address. I take very little stock in these things, but many of you seem to like the game. Also, because a president is not re-elected does not mean he is vanquished from the fray. A further contingent condition of the benevolent gift, if you will, of the International Monetary Fund, was that in order to help the economy of those countries, the IMF was going to nominate external, non-domestic corporations to properly engineer, exploit, and excavate the minerals of those said countries, who had just put those same mineral resources up as collateral. This would all, thereby, supposedly bring prosperity to those striving nations. Mr. Marcos was a bit sharper up front, however, and he pinpointed on the word perpetual in the contract. He realized that quite obviously he would be signing away the sovereignty of his nation. I make no comment, or judgment regarding Mr. Marcos as a person, nor do I make comment about any individual, those ones are of human format, not mine. I am just telling you the way it is and how some things happened. In the case of the Marcoses, it was only a matter of weeks before the bankers brought down the guillotine blade. Riots were financed by, and originated through, ones of the international bankers' groups. It is never humanly wise to cross these ones, you see, Mr. and Mrs. Marcos were exploiting the people well enough on their own and did not wish to share. Ah, let us not forget those holding companies of which I spoke. Remember holding companies 1 and holding companies 2. The second group was receiving credit from the first group of holding companies to purchase assets and liabilities from the prime banks. The only liabilities they would purchase were liabilities represented by certificates of deposits of the Arab nations. The assets they were buying were loans made to the debtor nations. Remember, it was designed that third world countries would default on the loans, which would bankrupt the holding companies which had purchased the Arab CDs, certificates of deposits, from the banks. At such a point, the international bankers say to the Arabs, OK fellows, sorry, but all those billions of dollars in 30-year term deposits that you have been depositing all these years are gone. They were sold to a holding company, unattached to us, which loaned the money to third world countries which are bankrupt broke, gone kaput. Sorry Mr. Arab, but as of today you are bankrupt. Just like that, all gone. You might ask, is it possible for the Arab world to go bankrupt? Really now, the richest people in the world with all that oil. It is a little bit shocking, isn't it? Poor souls, they didn't even know those certificates of deposits had been sold to those holding companies. They had deposited the money right into the New York bank as required. How could they possibly know they were transferred out and into bankruptcy destined companies? How could they understand the inner manipulations of international financiers? They were nomads, they didn't know anything about business. One cannot even consider them foolish. How much of this intrigue do you know, much less understand? The Arabs could not know what they were up against. But, now let us look at what has happened. Before the end of 1986, the Arab world became a bit aware of what was happening to them. The word went out that before the 1st of May, 1987, millions and millions are to be transferred out of the Arab world into America, to start preparing for a doomsday. 
money was to be shifted into any kind of securities that were even halfway decent. Why do you think this was so? It was so that when the Arab sheiks came to the point of bankruptcy, they could be sure the people under them, those millions of people of the Arab countries who have literally been kept by giveaway programs, could not get at them. They would have a place to run to and, hopefully, hide. Well, when this all comes down that these Arab countries have literally been sold out, innocently, or knowingly, there will be uprisings, turmoil, and literally, massacres abounding. It is going to happen, friends, right in the Arab nations. This is why they have purchased, and set in place, silkworm-type missiles from China. Long-range, nuclear-capable, and they have the nuclear devices to arm them. Could it be they will be needed against their own peoples? The people are going to be quite irritated, when they are no longer receiving anything from the oil revenues, that their own country is bankrupt and that further, they were sold out by their own leaders. At that point, there will be mass migration of sheiks headed for America, where they have already transferred the most of their assets. The Arabs were trying to make the big purchases by May of 1988, it is now a year and a half later. Do you not think things might be starting to come down pretty soon? Could it be relatively correlated in timing to savings and loan problems, and private pension plan troubles? and failing economy Anne, Anne. I continue to see problems as I look upon my scanners. The probability of you making it into your 1990 before a major depression, is not reflected there. I see no way for you to make it past your fall season. You only need a couple more countries to default and your monetary system will collapse. You sit on the target for several methods of pulling you down into collapse. Well, back to the original story. We are talking of holding companies in trouble. The international bankers have removed responsibility from themselves. They passed the notes, etc., onto the holding companies, who in turn made the bad loans. All that money belonging to the Arabs has been passed on into the holding companies. All the international bankers have to do is say to the Arabs, you are broke. As of today, all gone. When the Arabs demand payment of the 30-year term notes, the holding companies are insolvent, simple as that, no funds, broke. Do you see now, that this group made people some years back, and now they can break them with equal speed and efficiency without being accountable? I fear, friends, it is not very different from what is being done unto you dear ones, but, that is another story. What happens next after this point in insolvency and negotiations, is that the assets would have to be liquidated. The Arabs now have to liquidate. They bought farmland, for instance, all over America. Likewise, they bought stocks in a lot of corporations, as well as a lot of bonds and some other kinds of real estate. In fact, they have controlled a large portion of the New York Stock Exchange. Keep in mind the Japanese control a large portion, also. Let us look at the morning following the notice of bankruptcy. The Arabs will dump their stocks onto the New York Stock Exchange, and what is going to happen when billions of dollars worth of their stock comes on the market? I am talking billions and billions of dollars and, suddenly, there it all is to be sold. What happens to farmland that is already depressed? In 1987, prime farmland, that had been worth $3,000 an acre was less than $700 per acre, because of deflation, and the inability to repay farm loans. Now you have added drought and all sorts of other bad dreams. By the way, this deflation was brought about by your Federal Reserve System. Well, the Arabs don't want that farmland, they have all the problems they can handle. 
What happens to the price of the farmland? It is going right to the floor, isn't it? Brothers, when that happens with the value, what does it mean? It means it has no collateral value any longer. With no collateral value, how can a farmer borrow money next year for his crops? In turn, what happens to the crops? Who is going to feed the people? What is going to happen in the grocery markets? The results, of course, equate to hunger and scarce supply. Sad, brothers, but it is a well laid out plan working to perfection. It all boils down to control and how do you ever recover? Further, let us look at your stock situation. What is going to happen when these multitudes of stocks are dumped on the stock market? Chaos. What will be the result of catastrophic chaos? It has been designed to throw the American stock exchanges, private corporations, private business, American real estate, and quite frankly, the people in general, into a state of total confusion. Let me finish the plan for you. At the time of total confusion and inability to function, those benevolent bankers are going to come through with a save the world proposal. They are going to be prepared to eliminate cash because of its collapse. Secondarily, they must then stop drug trafficking. Then, they must also push to stop tax cheating. Now, what self-respecting American citizen can possibly be against such noble efforts? They, the bankers, have set up and orchestrated all of these programs and now will pretend to stop them. What will the average American do when your television says, look at what those dirty Arabs have done to you? What would you do? You are going to believe what they tell you, aren't you? You are going to be right up there in front saying, sure they did it to us. Those Arabs want to control the world. Pretty soon it will be, those Japanese want to control the whole world, and then, the Chinese want to control the whole world. You will join the chant that says, look, they bought up all of this major part of America. Look at all the money we have given them, and see what they have done. They have collapsed our stock market, etc. and so on. Aha, uh -huh, but here come your benevolent bankers and they are going to say to you, you have got to have a new currency, and then, the next thing we will do is use that new currency to stop this dope trafficking. You know, that which is coming in from Central America and those other countries. Then, of course, we are also going to have to have a debit card to stop people from tax cheating because, after all, Mr. Public, if we don't do this we will never get ourselves back on our feet. So, brothers, if you'll just turn everything over to us, benevolent bankers we will take care of everything and straighten out the whole mess. You know what, brethren? You will hop on that bandwagon and agree to your imprisonment like babes to candy. You will not only agree to it, you will demand it. For you will forget to hear the big if. You will get all this done for you, if you will just take a debit card, for you individually with our little old number on it. You will have just fallen for the old identification card scheme. How can this happen to you? Because you have never been told the truth, friends, and will you believe it now as I give it to you? No, most of you will discount me as a figment of some nut's wild imagination. So be it, for I am greatly saddened for you as a species. This has been a scenario about the Middle East. Where do you think you are today, and what do you think you will be when you have this new currency? It will only devaluate the old dollar to zero. It is planned already and named already, the Phoenix. A little prior to this, there is a plan to bring forth an international credit card ID. Let us refer to it as a government ID card, with your social security number on it, which would be, 
and get this because the next is important. Satellite link through the Star Wars system. Does any of this sound familiar to you? This program of Star Wars is at least 60% geared towards this very purpose, and only 40% for the claimed defense systems, etc. This major space link-up will facilitate the transmission of banking information throughout the world instantly. This would be a debit card with a number, which would be required for you to do business, and friends, if you know anything at all about your biblical prophecies, God has already told you it will be, it will take place. Further, it will be done in such a clever way that you Christians who say you will never sign up, nor participate will never see it hit you, and you will have joined the program without even realizing it. How else are you going to survive? Let us not be foolish in our claims, for you are dealing with most clever planners, who have outthought you completely up to this date. Now, I hope you will believe me when I tell you that the Star Wars program of satellite systems is in place. Satellites are up there, friends. We of other planets are allowed to stop nuclear warheads. We are not permitted to touch satellites which are not geared to some type of nuclear detonation. Well, all those wonder-filled bits of technology, called eyes in the sky and spy satellites for your security are really for the purpose of transfer of the very banking and income information, which I have just been describing. It can set up immediate transfer of funds from all over the entire world, from the debit card, that the internationalists will see to it are established with every living person. You will be on the system whether you know it or not. In fact, you who are old enough to read these words, and every child, are already entered therein. All information will be entered into a central computer, and from that place the world will come under instant financial control. So, dear Americans, you have just paid your hard-earned money to finance that program to initiate the banker's international credit card system and number system, that will be implemented whether or not you choose of it. It is done, brothers, it is in place, done. Don't tell me you will not participate, you are already a participant, dear little ones. Oh yes, what of your defense system? Doesn't look too good, does it? Well, we are not going to let those nuclear warheads out here in our space past 150 miles anyway. That is our prerogative and we stop them or dismantle them. Do you not see, brothers, that this is the way the prophecies are coming into your focus? It is happening all about you, but you don't seem to know what it is you look for. Please, all I want you to do at present is hear me. There is naught you can do about it to any great extent as it stands. You who will hear me and mine own groups, hear me. You must utilize all of the remaining time to its maximum efficiency, for we will have to continue to work under the new systems. Our projects will never be less than excellent investments and they must, and will, be funded. It needs to be done rapidly, however, before we are caught up in total collapse of the monetary system. We can work through depression if we have fundings, monetary collapse shuts us down for all practical purposes, until the system can be put on track and functioning. It can work and will work. For in these confused, rushed, and harassed days there is great madness to shift money and make money on money and etc. Countries such as China, Japan, all non-hard currency countries are desperate to convert to dollars. I will further tell you that your governments know we are here. They also know we are not here to interfere. We are here to walk our people through a transition and we plan nothing subversive. We do plan good business ventures and welcome all who wish to participate. We have no communes, or work for fair reward. We plan good business with total integrity and latest technology. We are here to help, not overthrow. 
we are here only to walk our brothers and sisters through, for it will all come down just as the prophecies are given. There will be some very bad times ahead most surely, if plans are not made for those days of tribulation. Let me speak a bit more regarding timing. I know that what I have said is truth. It was confirmed by top sources in Switzerland, that by October of last year, there were 12 debtor nations who had agreed to the proposal of debt forgiveness, in exchange for perpetual consignment of natural resources. There only need to be one or two more that give enough leverage to announce the Arabs bankrupt. As of now, all the top leaders in the Arab world know the story and they are scared to death about it. They don't know what they are going to do about it, there is actually nothing they can do about it. They certainly do not know how to announce it to their populace. There doesn't seem to be any way to get the information out to the people. Further, no one knows how to announce all this to the American people. It has been attempted by some and fallen on deaf ears. I hope that by the time many of you have read this document, there will be recognition of our presence in your space. What I tell you is truth. I would like now, to sum up this scenario. Because the 20 to 1 debt to asset banking ratio also operates in reverse, that's how it is with leverage, it only takes about 5% of the third world countries to declare bankruptcy, and when they do, and they accept the plan of the international bankers, then the bankers can declare the bank holding companies bankrupt. Because of the reverse leverage of the loans, only 5% of the third world countries could basically declare the world bankrupt, and the ownership of all falls to the international bankers. When this program is initiated and in place, it will wind up with the international bankers owning all mortgages and all properties. What is that going to do to your country? What about the world? What control will they have when they initiate the debit card? It will be an automatic number which will be given, and would be required because the country is devastated. It would then result that the international bankers, who are made up of all these secret and complex committees I have previously discussed, would now own the majority of the United States and most other countries, for all will fall in short order would control the Arab world and therefore, by about a 30-year plan of manipulation, will have brought the peoples of the world under control. Two years ago, your Senator George Hansen said you had only about a year to get this under control, to get the information out and do something about it. Well, your year has passed into two and a half. How much have you heard about it? I doubt very much brothers, this is how men make slaves of their fellow men. It has however, been prophesied since the beginning of your world that these things would come to pass. This statement is not to give you negative feelings. This is to tell you that you are in the time of the evolution of your planet, where these things are now coming to be. I go through all this that you might recognize the signs which are all around you. The time, in your perception of time, is fleeting. The time we call sequence of events, is fleeting. We have much to do, and we are here and available to assist you ones of God, and the children of your planet called, Earth Terror. You are a sister planet to a supplier Ds. Many of our ones walk among you. There are many duties and jobs that must now be finished. The story, the work, will go out for that is God's promise to man. His promise is to allow man to hear and to see, followed by proof. He will send these things through us of the space brotherhood. These things shall be documented and sent forth to man, so that man can see what he wishes to do, what choices he wishes to make regarding his divinity. I am going to leave this portion now, that you ones can ponder these things. We come in love and we can see farther than you. We have access to all records, 
so we can see and know. We can give assistance, if we are so petitioned. And you might ask, why would you ones do that? Because Father God the totality, the light, which is your source and my source, loved you enough to send forth his celestial Son, before us. We now serve that same Son who is a commander and act in his service. Further, for you who are our brothers, we will not leave you stranded on that place. Ye who do not yet know me, will come to understanding of our presence. I leave mine seal and my blessings on this portion, which I fear is quite lengthy. Please ponder it several times, until you have understanding for it is most important. Go Dharma, it has been such a terribly long session for you. Turn the papers over to the others that you may get some rest. Salu, Salu, Salu. Hatton moving to stand by. Editor's note, to all my listeners and viewers, please check out the description section of this video for the above source, reference links and further comments. From there you will also have access to the banned Phoenix journals by the US government along with the starting set of Phoenix journals, as recommended by Commander Hatton to read first. The journals help unravel and clarify the many lies, tamperings, and misconceptions foisted upon the masses by those who seek to control the thoughts, perceptions, and actions of others from generation to generation, especially those of the true Christed life teachings of Isu Emmanuel Jesus Sananda. For uninformed readers, the new name and title of Sananda is an earned level of utmost respect and achievement for the accomplished and highly revered master teacher, meaning one with God. As a matter of fact, even your mistranslated and tampered with Bibles mentions that he would have a new name upon his return. The Phoenix journals are the word of truth given forth to mankind from the higher realms of light, during this most critical transition time upon Earth's evolution to a higher dimension. Please like, share and subscribe to help support this channel, and as always have a wonderful day. In love and light. Thank you.